Back in the day, control interfaces were literal hardware. Big metal panels with knobs and levers and switches and analog VU meters. They were theatrical lighting control panels that actually carried enough high voltage that could kill you. And we had remote controls that resembled ray guns of the future. And here we go. Let's totally go down this rabbit hole. Let's talk about the king of remote control design. A tiny little company called Zenith. 1950. The Lazy Bone. The Lazy Bone was the first TV remote, but it was wired. And it was connected to the TV with a cable. It used this cable to transmit electrical impulses which were received by the TV. And the command was carried out by that impulse. In 1955, the Flashmatic. <laughs> I love it. It was the first wireless remote invented by Eugene Poli, and it worked by shining a beam of light from a flashlight style remote onto one of four sensors located at the corners of a TV screen. And each sensor corresponded to a specific function, so we had power on and off, we had channel up, channel down, audio mute. 1956, the Space Command. Invented by Robert Adler, this used ultrasonic sound and became the dominant remote technology for close to 25 years. Each button on the remote activated a spring-loaded hammer, and the hammer struck a solid aluminum rod tuned to specific ultrasonic frequency, which was then above human hearing, so you couldn't hear it. And each rod had a different length, producing a unique tone and triggering a unique TV function. Now, inside the TV, there was a small microphone-like sensor that picked up the ultrasonic sound signal and carried out the function based on that. Now, let's fast forward 10 years later, the first touchscreen was invented between 1965 and 1967 by E.A. Johnson at the Royal Radar Establishment in the UK. It was a touchscreen display designed for air traffic control systems. It was in a, an airport tower. And this next one, I'm not sure you would have guessed this, but 40 years later, the very first mainstream multi-touch device, which was re released in 2006. And guess what it was? the Apple iPhone. Now, let's travel into the future to year 2025, where you can build a touchscreen interface in minutes and deploy it to wall-mounted controllers, personal computers, to phones, and to wireless tablets, all from the same software. All right, everyone, grab your joysticks and let's fire up QSIS Designer and let's create a touch panel of the future. Here we go.